Today I'd like to touch on a controversial topic in the industry of blasting crews. And one of the one of the good things I've noticed, Doc, is is you kind of integrate the underground steroids and, and kind of what people do in their own time, kind of with the medical side and integrating them both so that a lot of these people can have healthy and, and happy lives moving forward and longevity. Um, what are your thoughts on blasting crews? Well, thank you very much. I, I'm doing the best I can. You know, I am came into this world around 2003, as people know, who follow me, then subsequently started writing articles and end up writing for muscular development from uh, 2009, 2012 as the anabolic doc, which was just great. And then since that time period, I've just flourished on my own. So, you know, the medical world is not involved. The traditional medical world is not involved, it, it, it more so now, but certainly 10 years ago, with steroid users. And I just see that to be a, as a problem. The medical world is involved now with heroin users and opioid users. I, I just don't understand, and, and, but I do understand. I mean, it's taboo. Uh, physicians, have, traditional physicians, have no idea about steroids. And I love these guys. They just don't have no idea of steroids. There's, they have not been involved in them. When it comes to blast and cruise, it is an interesting phenomenon that I've seen Real that term has developed in the last maybe five, ten years from the 70s. They lived on one cc of Sussan 250 a week. Boy, things have changed. That was kind of cruising, but they, they just saw it. They just stayed on baseline TRT, and then before a show or a meet, they would blast. You know, they would go up and add some Anadrol or D-ball, increase testosterone, add some other injectable intermuscular steroids, um, compete, and then come, come off. Can't say the names, but I've taken care of some of the most famous guys in the world. This is the powerlifting world, and that's what they did. So there's the essence of blasting and cruising. They didn't call it that, though. They just didn't call it anything. But now you have blasting and cruising. So what are the consequences? Well, again, and they're doing it because they realize they don't want to stay on the big doses, the blast doses. Now, as you know what's going on, some guys are staying on blast. It seems like it seems like a lot of these guys, like you said, back in the 1970s, 1980s, that a lot of these guys, their blasts is now the cruise. Oh, absolutely. Nowadays. It's, it's, everything's escalating, you know, and here we are with two deaths, unfortunately, in the community. They need to not do these things, of course, but it does, doesn't seem like it works that way. So they should be educated, and that's my take, education and mitigation of side effects as you're on steroids. If you're gonna hurt your heart when you're on steroids, I know how to mitigate those effects and educate and show you. When you show a patient their labs, which I love to do, they are amazed. Wow, doc, red cells are high. Kidney function, do I have kidney disease? My doctor said that my kidneys are failing because the ESMA GFR is down, my creatinine is elevated. Am I on creatine, doc? I'm on creatine, creatinine is elevated. What does it mean? My liver fun, I'm on a little bit of Anabar. My LFTs are elevated. Doc, what does that mean? Is my liver gonna fail? I mean, these are, can you imagine how much, how important these are? Obviously, traditional medical phys uh, physicians, I have a lot of respect for them, and they don't understand it, and they, they, and, and they don't want to deal with it. I take a different approach. My approach is show you what you're doing, explain it to you respectfully as an expert, and let you make the decision. Now, I, I don't give the steroids. Men don't come to me, they don't want steroids. If they want to be weaned off onto TRT, and if they need that, and we make a decision collectively that they need that, that's what they get. I mean, this is happening. Anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism is real. When you use steroids long enough, as I've said over and over, you'll be on testosterone cruising forever. So, Doc, what are... Let's get into baby doses of, of a blast. I hear a lot now that 
people are blasting on baby doses. Let's get into numbers. Like, let's say they're someone's cruise is the regular 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of testosterone per week of testosterone replacement therapy. That seems to be like the average of in the in the medical side. <clears throat> but some some of these people, their cruise is what they call baby doses, like. 500 milligrams of testosterone a week. What are the potential risks of, of doing that? Well, that's a great question. And again, like I said, it's all relative. I mean, what you said 100, 200 milligrams a week of testosterone, and these are esters of testosterone, right? Sipinate and anthe, less propanate because it's a shorter acting, and there's sustenon 250, of course. And there's, there's, there's uh, nibido, there's, there's multiple mixes now of esters that we have all over the world. So they're using what it looks like, or they think is TRT doses. I see a lot of guys coming in on 400 to 600 milligrams a week, and they think that's TRT. It's, it's, it's all relative, and the things over time are notching up. So those are baby doses. I mean, baby doses are less than 100. I mean, you're less than 200, less than TRT, I guess, baby doses, or maybe it's just TRT, that's baby. But when you say baby doses, I think of Anavar. I think of Anovar and, and Winstrol and Primobolin. So you know, not Dibol or Anadrol. No one's gonna no one's gonna think of a baby and a baby dose and, and Anadrol, you know, A bombs and D or D ball. But definitely people living on baby doses of Anovar. And we just don't know. There's studies years and years ago about this that they were inconclusive as far as health effects. But if you look for pe people on baby doses of Anovar, and a lot of these are women. You know, that 10 to 20 milligrams a day of Anavar, maybe every other day, baby doses, maybe days I train only. I mean, these are kind of secrets, right, that I, I hear from people. And again, I'm not giving a blessing, just reporting what I see. You know, and when you look at the labs on paper, it, you know, from collectively, it, overall, you see liver enzyme transaminases elevated. Does that, is that gonna lead to liver failure? We don't know. We just don't know. Over time, is it the cardiac issues? You definitely see everyone having a lower uh, than their natural baseline of HDL. If that person has a risk factor for coronary disease genetically, it's not going to be good. So baby doses, I don't know. And at the end of the day, stay strong and healthy. Thank you. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.